Welcome to another tutorial of the RC Air Club Connect system. Today we are going to be discussing gas setup basics. All right, so let's just go into uh, gas setup 101. Um, I'm not going to get into how an engine works, just the overall how the system is set up to make it work. Okay, so in order for the engine to fire, we need to provide power to the ignition and we need to provide fuel to the carburetor. Uh, in the right combo, the motor will run and we move forward. So how do we do that? Well, there are different components that go into a gas setup than what you've seen with glow or um, electric, obviously. So starting from back to front, you've got your battery. You have a receiver, a throttle servo, which is moving your throttle arm. You have your IBEC. The IBEC is the switch that turns your ignition on and off. And then you've got the ignition and the engine, of course. Spark plug. Okay, so let's talk about how this works a little bit and what you need to think about when you're setting up a gas engine, okay? So the first thing that we need to look at to start with is your ignition. And if you look on your ignition, um, we'll do a close-up on this, close-up, close-up. When you look at your ignition, it will tell you the maximum voltage that can go into that ignition, okay? Now that's important because that really helps determine all of the steps of how you set this up or what you need to do to set this up, okay? This is a six volt ignition, but I'm running 7.4 voltage to all of my servos. Okay, so let's do the first steps and how to make that work. With a 7.4 volt system, I'm using the battery going into, in this case, a, a Spectrum power safe receiver. And then the receiver is then attached to an IBEC. And this is the switch for the ignition. So you will see that this goes to the ignition, okay? Now, this IBEC has resistors that go on here and you can determine what voltage leaves this IBEC. So you can go 7.4 volts into it. And in this particular case, I have both of them removed and this is a 6.6 .6 volts leaving going to the ignition. The ignition is then hooked to your pickup. With this, we can now program a channel on the radio and that will turn this on or off, turning the ignition on or off, arming it. That means you have an instant uh, engine kill, okay? So you can flip a switch, your motor shuts off in the event of a dangerous situation, okay? You've got a little LED that will tell you whether the switch is on or the ignition is on or off. So going with this IBEC, it's really nice because it does reduce the voltage going into uh, the ignition. Well then, there are other options for IBACs. One of them, this is called the spark switch. It's put out by Powerbox. This IBEC creates a switch going into your ignition. Only you go to the receiver or from the receiver to the switch. Then you use an external battery source that goes into the power box, and then you power the ignition from here. So you're using a separate battery that is six volts to power the ignition in this case. Another option, so they call this an opto uh, kill switch. These are made by RXCEL, Rexel. So this will plug into your receiver. It goes out to your ignition. But because of the fact that we are running a six volt ignition and a 7.4 volt receiver, you're gonna have to use a voltage regulator or a BC to reduce the voltage from your receiver to the switch going to the ignition. So it gets a little bit confusing. I personally don't use this system. I've, I've went with the, the Tech Arrow IVAC. Um, that's what I use. Uh, just a lot of it's for simplicity and so far it's been very reliable for me so I've really liked it. Some of the other things that are um, important in a gas setup. 
your fuel tank. All right, so one thing to discuss with the uh, fuel tank that's really important, let's take a look at the fuel tank. You've got three lines here. You've got a filling line, and this will also, uh, you can remove the fuel using your fuel pump. This is your vent line. This will wrap around, and then it's a siphon line, anti-siphon line, so it wraps around, and it comes around, and then it drops down out of the plane. So this allows air to go into the tank so when your carburetor is pulling that it doesn't suck your tank down tight. It just allows the tank to have neutral pressure. Clunk. So there are two different clunks. You can have a clunk like this, which is just a standard metal clunk, and they work okay. This is what comes with the tank when it's set up. And, uh, I like to use these. I like to use these uh, felt clunks. The reason for that is in the event that your clunk moves out of the fuel line when you're, you're doing some maneuvers, you're doing downline maneuvers, and your fuel comes to the front of the tank, uh, this felt clunk will be soaked with fuel and it will allow the motor to continue to run and not be starved of fuel in a downline or something like that. So these are really helpful. Uh, the other two things that we want to talk about is fuel line. So you need to use Tigon or a Tigon fuel line that is fuel proof, can go inside the tank, it's not going to melt. There's another line to go inside the tank that you can use, Viton. I have not used that myself, but my understanding is it's really the right way to go or it's a great way to go. You cannot use this blue silicone line that's made for glow. This is not made for gas at all, so not an option. When you have your fuel line on, you want to make sure that you've tied it down using wire ties or um, some people use zip ties. I've, I've heard the argument that if you use a zip tie, it can introduce air into the system. Um, I've always found that wire ties is pretty convenient and it doesn't take long to do. Um, so you tie it here, here, here on your carburetor. So that way your fuel line is nice and secure. There's no air getting into it. The last thing that's pretty important with your throttle servo. Okay, your throttle servo, back many years ago, a lot of people used to say that you couldn't use a plastic gear servo. The vibration from the motor would uh, could break the servo gears. That said, I've always ran a metal gear servo for that very reason. What you don't want to have is a metal arm going to a metal push rod going to a metal arm on your carburetor. You want to have some kind of plastic in between. Uh, they say there's feedback that can go back into your throttle servo, which can feed back into your receiver and cause uh, problems. I know that was an issue in 72 megahertz. Um, with 2.4, I'm not certain, but we'll just, we'll assume that that is the case. So a plastic arm, your arm should be relatively the same size as your carburetor arm. So here's your carburetor arm. Should be relatively the same size as your servo, and that way you get linear movement going back and forth. Another thing with your uh, carburetor is you do have a choke. So you can see here, here's the choke. Um, this can go on, a, you can have a, a separate servo going to the choke. It's not necessary. Um, a lot of times I just use a, a mechanical um, arm to go ahead and choke the engine. Yeah, so really that's the basics. Um, one other thing that's pretty important, uh, when you are running uh, servos throughout the plane, uh, gas engines tend to have uh, more vibration. So using plastic arms, there is potential for the plastic arms to strip and break. So it's always better to go to uh, metal or aluminum uh, reinforced arms so that you don't have an issue when you're flying with a gas engine. Thanks for joining us for this tutorial. If you like what you saw, please subscribe or join us at rc-air.com and the Club Connect system.